Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back. And if you got a chance to see our last video from London of our happy tastings, you will have caught a glimpse of the tasting that we are gonna do today, which is the wife's favorite of the bunch, which is this hibiki tasting. Now, we have been traveling across Europe and we've been super duper fortunate to find at least a few bars that for a reasonable price, have uh, been able to offer a full flight of tastings for unicorn level whiskeys. And in this case, uh, we're talking about the Hibiki. So the Hibiki 30, Hibiki 21, Hibiki 17, and to a lesser degree, uh, you know, the Hibiki Blossom as well as the Hibiki Blender's Choice. So today, we're going to talk about the Hibiki flight tasting, which one we enjoyed the most, and how the whole family profile changes from one bottle to the next. Now, if you like this video, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the tastings, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, and we got tons of great stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does actually help out our channel to grow and you get notifications when our newest videos come out. All right, now, let's get down to the video. All right, so appropriate for a video like this, let's do a real quick whiskey check. And for this video, I am going to be drinking probably, I guess you would consider the youngest uh, brother of the Hibiki family, uh, which is going to be this Hibiki Harmony. And, you know, I think the Harmony as a whole uh, really does create a great representation of the Hibiki family, albeit, again, the youngest and the easiest to find of the bunch. Um, but I thought it'd be appropriate because we're doing all the other Hibikis. And also, this one specifically has the family profile, um, which is known for its subtlety. It's known for its ultra well balancedness, if not underpowered characteristics, and has the overarching flavors like green tea, fruit, light oak, and floral flavors. So it'll be a great introductory and something to enjoy while we're doing it. So let me get myself a little bit of juice here and see if we can get a pop. <laughs> get a pop. Hey, we got a good one. And uh, get myself some whiskey. Oh, yeah. And to whiskey. Because, honestly, let's face it, you can never drink too much of it. You can only just drink it too fast. Cheers. Oh, it's pretty good. All right, so let's talk about the first whiskey in this flight of Hibiki tastings, which is the Hibiki's Blender Choice. Now, this whiskey has been a bit of a victim, I guess, of its own circumstances, uh, because it basically came out right after the discontinuation of the much-loved Hibiki 17, which was discontinued counterintuitively, not because it wasn't popular, but because of the fact that it was actually too popular. Hibiki and Suntory overall just didn't have enough stocks to even keep up with the demand. So rather than having a super tiny age statement supply of whiskey, Hibiki decided to take the remaining stocks of age statement whiskeys and begin to blend them together to make supplies last long enough until they can replenish the age statement ones. At least that is the story. So the Blender's Choice is one of the first iterations that replaced the 17 year old version or the age statement version of Hibiki and it replaced it as a blend. Um, it was originally released in Japan as a Japanese domestic market product in 2018 and is a blend of whiskeys from the various Suntory distilleries. So Yamazaki, Hakushu, and Cheetah all put together. Moreover, it introduced wine-barreled aged whiskey into the blend to create a blend that's really kind of sort of unique from the standard age statement hibikis that have been put out before. Now, despite not having an age statement on it, it has whiskeys in it that range in age from 12 years old up to 30 years old plus. And according to Hibiki, the average age for all the whiskeys put together is 15 years old. Now, the ABV on the blender's choice is at 43%, which is a pretty standard ABV for most Japanese whiskeys, which I think what it does is it really allows the whiskey to stay super well balanced rather than being thrown off balance or needing a large flavor counterbalance um, like some of the gargantuan ABVs that you get in American bourbon. For the taste on this blender's choice, uh, we found in our personal notes that there was a lot of really amazing flavors that were all basically a little too light, at least for my palate. So things like apples and apricots, uh, and a really an underwhelming boldness, a wateriness, and basically almost no finish, just kind of a high and a buy at the same time. <laughs> so in hindsight for us, 
looking back over the entirety of the flight, we ended up putting uh, the Blender's Choice at the bottom of our favorite list. Um, just because it wasn't really that astounding and it didn't seem that unique. Um, so, you know, as far as buying it, it's something that I probably will let go by uh, if I did happen to see it somewhere available, even at a reasonable price. All right, so next up is another of the Harmony collection, which is the Hibiki Blossom Harmony. So when we think about what is blended whiskey, the reality is that by removing the constraints of things like age and things like type, the options to make a whiskey are sort of unlimited. You could make a blended whiskey that you wanted to taste like summertime or a first kiss, or in this case, taste like cherry blossoms. The Hibiki Blossom Harmony was blended in homage to the cherry blossom that in Japan is celebrated and venerated. Now, like the blender's choice, uh, it is a mixture of whiskeys from the distilleries Hakushu, Yamazaki, and Chida, and it's aged in white oat cast for at least 10 years plus. And then, finally, it is finished in Sakura cherry wood cast to give it a very distinctive flavor from the other members of the Harmony blended line. It is bottled at 43% ABV, like the blender's choice, and this bottle that we are tasting is specifically one out of 30,000 bottle run. Now, for us, we found that this one is considerably more pleasant than the blender's choice. Uh, the finished whiskey really adds another dimension to the classic uh, Harmony flavor, and also because, aside from the Sequoia finish, it is basically just normal classic Harmony flavor. But we found that first there is a much more pronounced wood flavor in the Blossom Harmony, uh, as well as like tannins that go along with that. Uh, green fruits, so things like sweeter fruits, maybe like melons and honeydew and grapes and green apples and kiwis paired with light floral notes of honeysuckle and a dash of cherry cakes. Mmm, cherry cakes. <laughs> And it was considerably more viscous than the blender's choice. And again, there was no ABV burn to be seen. So <laughs> it was a real easy drinker. Now, looking back on the Harmony Blossom, um, I think this one is actually going to be our third favorite. So I guess that'd be number three in the Hibiki flight, um, which was kind of sort of unexpected because I thought some of the age statements would actually be higher than this one, or I thought all the age statements would be higher. But, um, you know, this one actually comes out at number three. So we conclude that even in hindsight, um, that this one, it would be worth picking up um, if we were ever to see it, at least at a reasonable price. Now, this next Hibiki is where we start getting into serious Japanese whiskey territory. This next one is the Hibiki 17, which is the first of the age statement Hibikis uh, that we actually get to try, and the first one that we had ever tried. And uh, frankly, at the time, it's pretty exciting. The Hibiki 17 has really only grown in prestige as of late, especially as it has been discontinued as of 2018 and ultimately replaced with the hmm, lesser good <laughs> blender's choice due to the shortage that Suntory had in aged whiskeys. It's composed of both single malt and grain whiskey from the three distillers of Yamazaki, Hakushu, and Chida, and is made up of whiskeys that are single malt and grain whiskeys that are aged in ex-bourbon as well as some ex-sherry European casts, and the bourbon ones are American casts. The ABV on it is, like the other two, uh, 43%, and the whiskey is aged at least 17 years old. Kind of obvious. Uh, but also it means that there are some whiskeys in it that are older than 17, but the youngest one is 17 years old. Now the notes from our tasting of the Hibiki 17, they really highlight that there is a movement in flavor much closer to be aligned with some of the Scotch whiskeys. Um, really, it reminded me a lot of some of the Campbelltown style whiskeys of Scotches. Um, and it was slightly smoky, slightly salty, and has more caramel and toffee, as well as sweet notes that I would liken to you know, it kind of tastes like the syrup that you get uh, in canned peaches or maybe like dehydrated cherry sauce. It definitely had a much longer finish than either of the other harmonies, um, but it felt much, much more serious, much more kind of conflicted in its flavor palette and almost like restraining itself than the harmony, which is a lot like more whimsical. It's kind of airy fairy and lighthearted. Actually, you know what the harmony is like? Uh, it's like the lighthearted scenes from that Japan animation movie, uh, Spirited Away. And the Hibiki 17 is much more like the darker scenes from that movie. <laughs> you know, uh, if, you, if you saw it, you would definitely know what I mean. Anyways, for us, this one was good. Like, we both liked it, but I thought 
really it kind of represents much more the other side of Hibiki, the one that is much more aligned with scotch than what we were kind of thinking as far as Japanese whiskey or what the buildup had been with the harmonies. And also within the line, I felt that this one is probably going to be my second least favorite. So number four, because having an age statement, well, it isn't exactly what it's all cracked up to be. Just because you have that age statement doesn't mean you're instantly going to be better than all the blended ones that don't. Now, if I did see this one at a reasonable price somewhere, of course I'm going to buy it. Um, it is just crazy difficult to find. It's crazy hard to find at a reasonable price. Um, and it would be great to fill out the collection on the Hibiki side um, because we don't have any of the Hibiki 17s as of yet. All right, so getting to the penultimate Hibiki in this flight, uh, we are getting up to the Hibiki 21. And I actually have a bottle of Hibiki 21 here, although uh, it has not yet been opened up. Um, we will open it up here to do a tasting in the not-so-distant future, which I'm super-duper excited for, and hopefully uh, you all tune in to watch that one. But it's going to be it's gonna be pretty awesome. But realistically, the Hibiki 21, I mean, it is a no-BS masterpiece uh, within the motif of Japanese whiskey, but also, moreover, kind of in the world of blended whiskey and maybe just in normal whiskey altogether. It is made up from single malts from two of the distilleries, Hakushu and Yamazaki, as well as grain whiskey from Cheetah, and it has aged in ex-Bourbon American oak casks, ex-Sherry European casks, and to add one other variable into the mix, Japanese Mizunara oak casks as well, which is getting really, really, really scarce. Scarcer and scarcer as time goes by. The base whiskey for the Biki 21 blend is built upon, um, purportedly, the Yamazaki Sherry Cask Whiskey. And although the 21 is not officially discontinued in America as of yet, um, and uh, at least I don't think so, uh, it is super duper hard to find. Uh, and to find it at a reasonable price, that's not going to set your wallet on fire. I mean, it's, it's basically impossible. Now, for us, luckily, though, uh, we did end up getting this one at MSRP at uh, at Costco. <laughs> and if you want to take a look at that video, how we got that, I'll put a link up here for that as well. Also, as a side note, if you notice on the Hibiki bottles, they have multiple sides. In fact, there's 24 ridged sides all the way around. And each of those sides actually represents one of the traditional Japanese seasons that they have. I guess they have 24 of them. And so each of these sides represent that, which I thought is kind of an interesting note. Also at this point, it's probably no surprise that the Hibiki 21 is ABV'd also at 43%. And you can see that there. And the whiskey inside is also aged a minimum of 21 years, but it could be older. Also, when you think about the blended whiskey, like, for example, the Harmony, right? Um, the blend is something that was done to ensure that there was enough whiskey to go around. It's sort of like an afterthought, a detractor from the whiskey, if you will. Um, but with the Hibiki 21, the blending is basically another masterstroke that hones the whiskey into the work of art that it actually is, rather than like an afterthought <laughs> that was introduced to try to keep the whiskey going. From our personal tasting notes, we found that in the Hibiki 21, some of the flavors like grape, which are in the Harmony, have basically completely disappeared. It is considerably more complex in the flavor palette, and it's really not afraid to show a little bit more like muscle with the ABV playing a much more prominent role in the flavor, but still well balanced. Where things start to get interesting is the increase in nuttiness. And it's not like that peanutty kind of knob creaky or pecans and walnuts that you would get in bourbon, but it's things like exotic nuts, like macadamia nuts, or maybe perhaps like Brazil nuts <laughs> that really start to show through from the bottom. But it is still super very easy to drink and keeps the full bodied thickness that you get with a 17, along with a white pepper spiciness and a much more understated sweetness, like maybe raisins soaked in sweet wine. So this one we decided to put at number two on our list as far as our favorites. And of course, I would buy this one, yes, yes, a thousand times yes, at a reasonable price. Um, but it's also good enough to think, you know what? I may consider buying it at an unreasonable price, <laughs> depending how unreasonable it is. So let's talk about this next one, which is the Hibiki 30. And when you think about whiskeys, when you reminisce about the whiskeys you've drank, there are some whiskeys that are very enjoyable. And then maybe a step up. There's some whiskeys that are amazing. But then there are whiskeys like this Hibiki 30 that taste like divine inspiration. It's transformative in one's whiskey journey. And you know what it tastes like? It tastes like revealed truth. In fact, if you are into whiskey, not just Japanese whiskey, this Hibiki 30 is going to be a strong competitor for perhaps the best whiskey that you have ever had. 
This Hibiki 30 not only puts the rest of Hibiki line, but the vast majority of other Japanese whiskeys, of most other scotches, and dare I say, most bourbons, it puts them all into the shade. It is a masterwork designed with such intention and such care and such specificity about how the palette and the overall experience should be that it truly is another worldly experience, like dying and going to whiskey heaven. Now, the Hibiki 30 obviously is aged 30 years. It's ABV'd at 43%, like all the other ones. And it is much, much more than just the trophy wife version of whiskey. It is not just another pretty face, but it actually delivers. Now, like the 21, uh, it has multiple top awards, things like International Spirits Competitions of 2004, 2006, and 2008, as well as the World's Best Blend of Whiskey of 2007 and 2008. So it has a CV to back itself up and justifies the praise that it gets, but what it really comes down to is how it tastes. And from our personal notes, we got things like English toffee, honeycomb, wood, golden goodness, whatever that means, maturity, complexity, masculinity, marshmallows, Brazilian nuts, figginess, and a depth of flavor that could sink the Titanic. Words simply cannot do justice to the Hibiki 30, but the wife and I, I don't think we are ever gonna perceive whiskey the same after our experience with this Hibiki. All right, so that's our review of the Hibiki flight test from our trip to London with the Hibiki 30, the Hibiki 21, the Hibiki 17, the Blossom, and the Blender's Choice. And if you like these videos, if you like the Wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff we got coming out for you, and we have tons of amazing stuff coming out for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help our little channel to grow I'm pretty sure it's great for your whiskey mojo and you get notifications when our newest videos come out. Now just remember, wherever you are in the world, if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And if it's the Hibiki 30, it might even be me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I'm out and adios.